Well, hello there, acolytes of Fluff Hilda the Moist. Riv here, and we're going to talk about the latest controversial thing to pop up on furry social media. Now you're saying to yourself, drama on furry social media? How could this be? This has never happened before, especially on Twitter. Well, yeah, Twitter is the home of drama on furry social media. Oh, wait, it's called Twat X now or something. Like, I can't even keep track of it. So anyway, this latest controversy is surrounding a convention that's going on this very weekend. That would be Denver. And an interesting decision that was made by the hotel to discontinue allowing military-type garb to be worn at the convention. Now, this sparked quite a debate, and there are basically three different parts to that debate. We're going to break them down and talk about them. The first main issue that people had was that the rules surrounding this were really difficult to understand. It was super vague. Now, I'm not criticizing the people on the Denver staff who had to throw these rules together probably with minimal notice, but it's really hard to understand what they're getting at, what's allowed and what isn't. I'm going to put those up here. You can pause the video and read them if you want, but they're pretty confusing. The gist of it is there are normies at the convention, in the convention area, in the hotel, and they may be uncomfortable given the current political climate with people wearing paramilitary attire. They specify things like plate carriers and, you know, tactical gear, things like that, things that look like kind of SWAT team tack looking. But then there are a bunch of confusing exceptions. They're like, okay, but if you're a current or former member of the military and you want to wear your military uniform, you can do that, but you have to get permission and show ID over here at the con. And well, it's okay to wear some of this stuff if you're wearing it with fursuit parts, but if you're not wearing it with fursuit parts, you can't actually wear it. And then there are more specific examples like, well, you can't cosplay as somebody from Call of Duty. But you could cosplay as this because that's different and it's like the whole thing is just so hard to wrap your head around. You may have heard of some of these um, state laws that are being passed in the United States being thrown out by federal judges as unconstitutionally vague. This is kind of the same concept here. This rule is so vague that it can't really be enforced. If somebody from the con approached someone and was like, hey, that violates this rule, you can't wear that, there's a whole lot of loopholes and arguments the person could make and be like, wait, but it says here, yes, I can, because, oh, wait, I can't know. Well, what if I put my fursuit paws on with it? Now it's totally legit, right? That was the problem a lot of people had with it. It needs to be tightened up. It needs to be more succinct and just easily understandable in order to enforce it. I think they're going to have a lot of problem enforcing this if they have to do it. So then you kind of had people on either side of the equation. One group was arguing that this was discriminatory toward current and former military members, or that it didn't make any sense if they're going to ban tactical gear because they're still allowing pup hoods and kink gear and stuff like that. And it was kind of hypocritical to ban one thing and then allow something else that was potentially controversial and potentially offensive to people. Denver does allow pup hoods, and at least the last time I went, they allowed latex and some more heavy kink-type stuff later on at night. And then on the other hand, there were people like, good, I agree with this. It's kind of freaky and scary to see people dressed up like commandos walking around the con floor. It can be intimidating. You don't know what their motives are, if they're really part of the convention, or they're there to cause trouble. And of course, drama and arguing ensued in the comments. Now, it's rare for somebody to actually ever win an argument in social media comments or make a comment that's like so good that you're just taken aback, like, wow, that was a good point. Now, there was such a comment on Twitter, X, whatever, underneath this post from Denver that was like, it just stopped me in my tracks. Like, I didn't even want to read any more comments. I was just like, that is like game, set, match. You just won this argument right there. That was the best comment I've read this year. And I'm going to put it up here for you. The gist of it was, hey, my school didn't get shot up by a person wearing a leather dog mask. And I was like, wow, that's a really good point. You just kind of did win that argument in one sentence. I mean, yeah, there's not a comparison there. Sure, somebody might be uncomfortable or offended by pup hoods or harnesses or whatever at a convention, but... These people haven't perpetrated horrible acts of violence, and a lot of horrible acts of violence have been perpetrated by people wearing tactical gear. 
So I kind of get why there's a difference between the two and why they're banning one thing and not the other. I mean, they don't want people at the con or outside of the con who are at the hotel to potentially be intimidated or see somebody and not know what their intentions might be. I get it. Is it going to happen at other conventions? Maybe. Do I agree with it? Well, I think if you make it obvious, and I think that's where the rules were kind of going on this, that it's not something serious, like by putting fursuit parts on it or whatever and making it obviously cosplay and kind of lighter rather than a real serious commando thing, it's probably acceptable. But I think they need to tighten up the rules a little bit and make it a little bit more obvious, kind of more black and white, what's allowed and what isn't, if they want to prevent people from wearing this type of garb. All right, I'm guessing a lot of you have strong opinions on this topic, so let me know down in the comments. What do you think? Should people be allowed to wear paramilitary clothing and equipment at events like this, if that's their style of cosplay? Or should they not? Or should the answer be somewhere in between? Thank you, as always, to our super amazing patrons. You help keep this channel going and growing. And to you, we are forever grateful. If you might like to consider becoming a patron, there is a link in the description. All right, for all of you at Denver this weekend, you're probably not watching this video, but I hope you have a whole lot of fun. Unfortunately, we weren't able to go. We have just committed to too many furry cons this year, and it's just too busy at work. We got a lot of fun video content planned out for you in the future, so stay tuned and uh, hit that subscribe button, maybe if you haven't already. Until next time, you stay safe and stay fuzzy. Mm-hmm.